Welcome everyone uh, back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the previous uh, two demo lectures, we introduced uh, two audio tools, Audacity and Sonic Visualizer, which were quite useful for uh, visualizing, editing, analyzing sounds. And in this uh, lecture, I want to introduce the, the tools that uh, have been developed specifically for this course um, that have been developed using Python and that we will very much go into detail into uh, all the programming classes and a lot of the demos also will be using uh, those tools. Uh, let me uh, first uh, go to the page where uh, these tools are available. It's in a GitHub repository. I will talk about that in the programming uh, lecture. And it has this uh, in the, under the directory MTG and SMS tools. In here, um, I will be constantly updating the tools as, uh, as uh, things uh, are uh, being developed and as bugs are being fixed, etc. So I recommend you to download uh, and, uh, the latest version that uh, you can find. Okay, and here you can download a zip file and you can follow the instructions here to compile. I don't think it's that difficult under Ubuntu, but anyway, in the programming class, I will talk about uh, this in uh, more detail. This is a tool that, uh, or a set of tools that do not have uh, sort of an icon that I can click to. So uh, the way to access the tools is through the terminal. This is the terminal in uh, Ubuntu. Um, when you open the terminal, it goes to your uh, home directory. So this is my home directory. Uh, and in it, uh, I have uh, a few um, directories that uh, I have been uh, using uh, for this class. Um, when I download the, the SMS tools uh, package, it creates uh, this directory, SMS tools master. Uh, so to execute uh, the, the examples, I have to go into that directory. So I just type SMS. By the way, uh, a very good um, key to use is the tab key, which is the autocomplete uh, it allows us to go quite quickly to uh, subdirectories or to complete uh, names of files. Okay, so this is the directory of, uh, of the SMS tools. Again, it has some subdirectories. It has the lectures, it has the software, it has the sounds that I have been using, and it has a workspace uh, directory which I recommend you to use as a place to work from. But uh, now I want to uh, go to the interfaces uh, for demonstrating some of these tools. And these are within the software directory. Okay. In the software directory, again, there is some um, subdirectories. And uh, the, the interface I want to use are the models interface. Okay. So I go to the, the models interface. And in it, um, there is uh, quite a few files, but there is a, a main interface for all the files, and that's uh, what is called uh, models.gui.py. Uh, okay. So we can execute this file, and through that interface, I will have access to all of them. To execute a Python uh, file, I can just type Python and the name of the Python file. So if I type models uh, gui.py, it will execute uh, this Python file. Okay, so this uh, is an interface. So it has opened up this, uh, this uh, small interface. And in it, uh, I have access to all the different uh, analysis synthesis tools that we will be uh, talking about in class. Uh, like, for example, the DFT, the SDFT, a sign model, harmonic model, stochastic model, signal plus residual, signal plus stochastic, harmonic plus residual, and harmonic plus stochastic. That's quite a lot, but we will go through all of them in both the demo and in the programming lectures. 
Um, to put you an example of how these things work, let's just go, for example, to the short time Fourier transform. Okay, so this is one of the first uh, models uh, that we will talk about. And here we can input a file. By default, there is always something that makes sense, but let's go to another file. So this is the directory of my sound. For example, let's use this orchestra sound. And then we can play it from here. Okay, this is a recording of a Chinese uh, orchestra uh, playing a fragment. And in here we have a whole bunch of parameters that we'll be uh, using to analyze uh, this sound. But let's just uh, use the default parameters and click Compute. Okay, and this is what it has computed. Uh, this was the original file, input uh, sound, the X uh, signal. And then it has analyzed the spectrogram, like the ones we're seeing in uh, Audacity and Sonic Visualizer. But now we have actually computed with our own program. And it has uh, a little bit more control than in Audacity and Sonic Visualizer. We can see the magnitude of the spectrogram. And also we can see the phase of the spectrogram, which we'll talk about that. And then it can inverse this process and resynthesize the original sound output uh, sound uh, uh, the y signal and in from the interface we can play this output sound okay so that's uh, basically the same so that means that this analysis uh, synthesis uh, has worked uh, quite well in terms of an identity system uh, so that's good. Let's go to another uh, of these models, maybe the, the most sophisticated one that we will do, which is uh, called the harmonics plus stochastic uh, uh, representation. And again, let's maybe take uh, another sound. Instead of this uh, sax phrase, let's take the short version, so it's going to be quicker. Okay, and let's play it. Okay, this is um, uh, a sax phrase, and again, we can analyze a whole bunch uh, of things uh, and uh, define many parameters. Let's just compute it. So this is a, a model that is, uh, is more sophisticated, that more things, so it takes a little bit more time. And this is the result of this analysis. This is the input sound we just heard. This is the analysis representation we have computed that shows the harmonics and what we call the stochastic representation and this is the synthesis. Uh, by looking at it, it's quite similar to the original. Let's just uh, listen to that. Okay, so yes, it's quite similar. But in this analysis, what we have done is analyze two aspects of the sound. One that we call sinusoids, and let's hear that. Which basically captures most of the of the components of what is uh, interesting in the sound, but also has a residual which is modeled as an stochastic signal that we can also listen to. Okay, it's, it's quite soft, but if you pay attention, is uh, is there and is basically the the breathing part, uh, air part of uh, of the sound that is uh, quite relevant in in many sounds. Um, okay, let's uh, close this interface and let's go to another interface that uh, we also will be using. And so we go back by doing this. Okay, and now we are again in the main uh, directory of the tools. And if we go to the software, uh, and instead of going to the models interface, we go to the transformations. Okay, so we go to the transformations interface. And these are um, programs, uh, algorithms, that what they do is transform the sound using uh, the models that we just saw. And again, it has a whole bunch of, uh, of mm, transformations. And there is one which is the main, um, the main interface, which is this transformations GUI. Okay, so we can execute this uh, 
uh, file by typing Python and the name of uh, this file. Okay, so in here we have a number of uh, possibilities to transform different sounds uh, using the models uh, we talked about. So for example, we can do a morph with the short time period transform, we can do transformation with the sign model, transformation with the harmonic model, with the stochastic model, the harmonic plus the stochastic, and uh, do a morph with the harmonics plus the stochastic. Let's go to the harmonics plus the stochastic that we uh, mentioned uh, before. And let's, uh, instead of the sax phrase, let's just maybe take a, a shorter phrase, a sax phrase, but short. Okay, we can play it. Okay, and uh, with the default parameters, let's analyze it. Okay, uh, this is the original sound. Uh, this is the analysis that uh, we did. Uh, so we see the harmonics and the stochastic component and the resynthesize, which looks um, like uh, what we did before. So it looks quite good. And now um, let's go back to the interface and we can apply some transformations. There is some values here, but let's just erase this and let's put some sort of identity parameters. So identity means that there is no change. So frequency is scaling, there is a time value pair. So at time zero, we can put uh, frequency scaling of one. So that means there is no scaling. And then at time one, at the end, uh, we just uh, put the same thing. So that means uh, no frequency scaling. Frequency stretching, uh, we will do the same thing. So we'll do zero, one, one, uh, one, and Time scaling, uh, we are not going to do any time scaling, so at time zero we will have time zero, and at time one we have time one. So the time is normalized, so we can put any values, but it um, means that we can just work also from zero to one. And in here, in terms of timer preservation, let's uh, put zero so that it doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's apply the transformation, and uh, now we can listen to it. Okay, we haven't done anything. But now let's do some change. For example, what can we do? So let's uh, transpose to an octave higher, what that would mean. So it means I would just put uh, 0, 2 and 1, 2. Okay? And now if we play that, uh, okay, and if we do timbre preservation, so that means it tries to maintain kind of the timbre. It will sound a little bit better. Okay, but uh, we can do uh, other things. For example, let's do a time uh, a frequency stretching. Frequency stretching can be, let's put this back to uh, what it was. It's kind of uh, stretching the partials and the make them and uh, not equally spaced. So if we start, for example, uh, starting from uh, at time zero, we stretch it a little bit, and at time one, and then we stretch it quite a bit more. Okay, we stretch it 1.01, .01 and here 1.1. 1 .1. Let's apply this transformation. And here you see that the, the harmonics kind of uh, go up and they, they, they uh, sort of get more separated as, uh, as the frequencies uh, go higher. Let's hear that. Okay, so we hear this kind of inharmonicity in the higher frequencies. Of course, if we make a, a larger uh, transform, a larger stretching, uh, we can uh, have a much stronger effect and this will be uh, very pronounced. Okay, and uh, we can put go back to the no transformation in terms of frequency stretching, and one, zero, one, 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 and then let's do some time stretching. So at zero, zero, for example, let's uh, do that at 0.5, we compress the sound, so we, uh, we do much shorter, so let's say 0.25, so it's going to be 
half of the duration and then at time one we leave it the same so it's gonna r go faster at the beginning and then it will in fact go slower towards the end let's hear that okay and if we play it okay so it has uh, gone faster at the very beginning first half of the sound and then the second half of the sound has slowed down okay that's uh, just a very uh, brief example again we will uh, talk quite a bit more about uh, these uh, programs these tools and hopefully we'll have uh, fun uh, trying uh, all these uh, things uh, out um, and that was it uh, we, uh, if you want to know more about uh, these SMS tools, of course, follow the class. We will uh, uh, go quite deep into that, and you can go to this uh, directory for, for the actual code. And again, all these sounds come from FreeSound. Um, so this was all. So in these uh, three demo lectures uh, of this first week, we have uh, presented three tools, three applications. Um, Audacity, Sonic Visualizer, and our own tools. Uh, hopefully this gives you an overview of the type of tools that uh, can be of use to manipulate audio. And uh, hopefully this has given you an interest in uh, following the course and really trying to understand what is behind this. Uh, so in the demo lectures we will just uh, make a sort of a introduction to the tools and from a from a very practical application but then in the programming classes and of course in the theory lectures we will go deeply in trying to understand all these things so that's all for today and i hope to see you uh, in next class thank you